everybody. How are you? Kira, Harley, and Chase. We are out in the woods, kind of, <laughs> right along the edge of our field. And today was the day we moved the girls out. Our breeder pigs. Kiwi here. And this is Kiwi here. Okay. And that is Peach. Peach is actually due to Pharaoh um, as soon as five days from now, four days from now. Um, but she could go longer than that. I'm guessing by looking at her, she's probably got a week, left. A week to two tops, no more than that. Um, last time, Peachy gave us uh, nine beautiful babies, and she did so completely unassisted, completely unattended, and she was the most amazing mother, raised all nine. By the time we found her, it was like within an hour and a half's time of her giving birth, um, Actually, an hour and a half's time of us actually being in the barn doing our morning chores. Um, she had given birth to nine babies and had them all dry, standing, nursing. It was incredible. Um, so, yeah, we have her out here. I'm just going to prop you guys up so I can talk to you. You're a little crooked. Go ahead. Go play on your grapevines. Okay. So... Kiwi and Peach here are sisters, and they are um, Mangalitsas. Mangalitsas are a Hungarian breed of pig. Um, they're also known as sheep pigs. As you can see, they have kind of curly coats. Um, ours don't have as curly of hair as some of them do. Some of them can get super, super shaggy and adorable. Um, but these girls just have the cutest face, and they're just the sweetest temperament of any pig I've ever been around. They just have the best demeanor. Um, but what's really spectacular about the Mangalitsa breed is their meat quality. Um, Mangalitsas are a, a breed of pig. They're a heritage breed and they are known for having super red, beautiful, dark pork. Uh, well marbled. It actually, you could mistake it for beef is how red it is and how well marbled it is. Um, and another amazing attribute of this breed of pigs is their lard quality. Mangalitsas have a very big cap of lard, purebred Mangalitsas do, um, have a very big lard cap. And um, what you do with that is make, you obviously render it down for lard. And it is absolutely amazing for baking and cooking. Uh, you won't ever have a better pastry than if you use lard. I also like to fry with lard. It's actually, um, you know, contrary to popular belief, lard is actually much better for you than any of your vegetable oils or anything like that to fry in. So lard is something that is, um, you know, favorable in a homestead world. Now, when we breed our pigs, we breed our Mangalitsa sows on our Berkshire boar. Berkshires are still a heritage breed, but they're a lot more along the lines of a production style pig. They're gonna have a faster um, grow out time where a purebred Mangalitsa might take 16 to 18 months to grow out. A Mangalitsa Berkshire cross usually takes eight months to fill out. And um, they maintain that beautiful red marbled meat quality uh, while getting a little bit less of a fat cap. Because what typically happens and why the Mangalitsa breed has gotten such kind of a bad rap on, um, amongst a lot of pig breeders is because when the Mangalitsa breed, uh, when, you, when you grow them out, so you, anything after about 200 pounds with a Mangalitsa starts to develop more fat cap. And what happens is the cut of pork is smaller and the fat cap gets bigger. So your pork chop size isn't going to be as big if you let them continue to grow. So by crossing them on the Berkshire, you're maintaining the meat quality, but you're eliminating some of that fat cap. So you're getting a bigger cut of pork. Uh, you're never going to get to the same size as you would with a pink pig like a Yorkshire or a Landrace. They just get, you know, or even um, a Hereford breed, uh, they just get so big, so fast, and you get you know, a long pig and big cuts. Uh, but then, you know, you're also sacrificing, in my opinion, meat quality. Now, of course, any pig that is grown, you know, on a farm uh, and not production style is going to have, in my opinion, a better meat quality uh, because it's just, you know, how you take care of them, how you feed them, and you can manage that care a little bit easier. Not that production style pigs aren't well cared for. They probably are more well cared for than these guys. But one aspect that I will say that is different from the production style pigs to these guys is we don't vaccinate and we don't worm with chemical dewormers. We do worm, we'll use um, uh, 
give me a second while well, we use black walnuts first and foremost that's actually one of the best natural forms of dewormer that you can give to a pig is black walnuts we just in the fall we'll just go grab a whole bunch of them and throw them out and they love them um deatomaceous earth de that's the other uh wormer that we'll use did you cup something in your nose <laughs> they're down there playing on some grapevines that they found and the pigs are hanging out with them these girls um, have been raised with these children and they absolutely adore one another when the kids are squealing and playing uh, kiwi especially will go over and investigate she'll kind of you know grunt at them like be careful she's kind of mother hen there <laughs> like I said before they just have the best demeanor now some breeds of pig are sold with the selling point that they don't root they don't tear up your ground. Um, in my experience, these guys aren't going to be one of those. They are going to be a little bit more gentle on the ground than some of those pigs. And those pigs I'm talking about are IPPs and Cooney Coonies. Uh, I don't know if there's any others. Those are the two main varieties. Uh, they, they don't root as much. They'll graze more. Um, and I've heard some people say that pigs don't graze. That is absolutely not the case. These pigs will graze. They love grass. They like to go about and eat all the brush. Uh, they'll have this clear. Um, I'm putting you, I'm showing you guys what this ground looks like now at the beginning of their pasturing. We just put them out here. I'll show you guys again in about a month's time what it looks like. But I do have some plans. So pigs are very expensive to keep, especially right now with the price of everything going up, up, up. Uh, with the grain prices and everything because grain, uh, pigs are a grain intensive p livestock to raise. I don't care who you are, <laughs> you're going to have to supplement them at some point with some sort of grain. Even if you pasture them, that amount of grain comes down some, but you do have to supplement them some or you'll be feeding them forever before you actually take them to the butcher. So what i decided i want to do and they're also very labor intensive when you have them in in the winter they're very labor intensive they require a lot of heavy lifting for cleaning because no matter what you do they're going to make their pen an absolute sloppy mess it's just how they are it's where the term piggish comes from because that's just how they are having them outside is much more conducive we don't like to typically leave our pigs outside in the winter because of two reasons. One, because we don't have a good outdoor structure to kind of shield them. They don't really need a lot of shielding from the cold. They do very well in the cold. It's the wet that isn't good for them in the winter. Um, they have a big fat cap of lard and that insulates them very good. So they, they're impervious to cold, but it's the wet that's no good for them. When you have wet and cold, it's not a good combination for any, any creature. So we don't have an, a good outdoor structure for them. I have a little spider crawl in here. He's a cute little guy. Anyway, he's, he's going that way, I, I'd assume. Anyway, the other thing is water in the winter. Uh, where we were having them before, we didn't have electric and therefore, you know, it, everything freezes if you can't plug into a tank de-icer. Um, so this year, what I'm hoping to do, and I'll show you around here, but I'm hoping to run really long permanent paddocks in this area that's wooded. And I'm hoping that I can get Jeff to run me some electric out here. I just need one or two outlets to make me completely happy. And then we'll put a small overhead structure. Again, just with a couple sides, basically just to, you know, keep them dry when it might be rainy or snowy. So let me show you a little bit around. All right, I think I'm out of the way of the little spider. So first things first, you'll see that we're using two lines of hot wire. Now these girls are hot wire trained. They don't require a whole lot. And I would say we're probably at about six inches and then another five inches high. And that's what we're using for them. They don't require more than that. These girls are excellent. That The first time, as soon as we brought them out here, they haven't been outside since... I'm going to say October or November. November. So they haven't been outside since November. They've been in their indoor accommodations and they came out here as soon as I turned the fence on, one of them touched it one time and they were like, that's it, we're done. We ain't doing that again. So they're really, really good with the hot wire. Also makes it nice because you can step right over it. The next feature of our outdoor pig program is of course the barrel with the nipple drinkers on here. And I'll show you these. So the pig just comes over, they put their mouth on it and they squeeze 
pigs are notoriously curious and they'll put their mouths on everything. So uh, all of these girls know about the barrels and the nipple drinkers. Uh, any pig that hasn't been around them will come over and mouth it until they're like, oh, water comes here. So we fill up 55 gallons at a time. Right now there's about 35 gallons in here. We'll run out more later. And I just brought water out to them. So this is the pig run. And as you can see, are you coming to say hello? Are you gonna come say hello? Come on. That's Kiwi. She's such a pretty girl. Anyways, this is our run that we made. It's not super huge for right now. Uh, I really just wanted to get them outside and I ran out of fencing, so. Farm kids. Ready? Uh huh. And you, I mean, pigs. These are just the best natured pigs in the whole entire world. What you guys got for me? Are you swinging? Ready? Okay. Oh my. Be careful. Wee! Wee! Okay. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we just have the, the fence comes just down along here. And it's going to go right over to there and then straight back up again to the top. So they have a look at that belly. Look at all that baby belly, Peachy. They really have a good area. Now you can see they've already started to root. And they really won't dig deep. These guys really won't dig deep. They like to um, root around and get the grubs and the worms. They love that, which is good for them because that's extra protein. I want to see if Peachy will allow me to show you what she's up to. Oh. Peachy! Be careful, Peach! You're going to come say hello, Mama. You're coming to say hello, Mama. That's my phone and you can't eat it. No, you can't. <laughs> oh, Peach! Oh, she's a good girl. She's starting to drop. All of her weight is going down away from her back, down to her belly. So, I'm happy to have her out. We just usually, once they're bred, just leave them with the boar because they cohabitate very well. Now, a lot of people will say, aren't you concerned she's with her sister? Should she be separated? No, actually. Um, she actually delivered her last litter with Kiwi, and they did fine. Just fine. So, hi there, Kiwis. Are you going to say hi? You going to show everybody your beautiful face? Are you too busy? Yeah, you're too busy. Such a sweet girl. I just love these girls. We had some other breeds of pigs, and hi, yeah. Yes, we did. We had some other breeds of pigs, but these were just, you can see their demeanor is just fantastic. And look how cute. Yeah, look how cute. So, you know, with anything else on the homestead, you're gonna experiment and see what, and see what you like. And we found that the Mangalitsa is just the pig breed for us. And we would have a Mangalitsa boar, but we do like having the cross because it gives you a little bit better size pork chop or pork steak or whatever. And we still get the good lard, huh? Yeah. Oh my God. They're so cute. <laughs> well, that's probably gonna wrap it up for today. I thought I would tell you a little bit about our pig program and a little bit about what we do. We really do like having the pigs out in the woods. Um, and I'm really, really hoping that we can just develop this part of the woods. I don't know if you can see our, our house and everything is back there. So we're a bit of ways. And our property goes to that tree line right there. And then we own a lot of woods here. So I'm hopeful that we can just, this was unused land. I mean, we didn't do anything with it. I'm hoping that we can just pasture this in and leave them in the forest. That's where they like to be, you know, that's, that's in their nature. And they're able to do what pigs like to do and they benefit from it and they're much happier. And happy pigs make happy pork. Happy pigs make delicious pork. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you maybe learned something from it or maybe it intrigued you a little bit about the Mangalitsa breed. If you're thinking about getting into pigs, they really are fantastic. I hope you guys have a great night and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.